Hello dramas and other creatures. You've heard of the train beat. Today we're going to be looking at the boat train beat. This is a song by the Pogues and it was uh, suggested to me by one of my viewers. So uh, just as a uh, inducement to you to also add your suggestions in the comments if you'd like me to cover something. Uh, anything that piques my interest stands a good chance. Anyway, Boat Train, I wasn't familiar with this song before, but it's a very, very energetic, punky sort of uh, groove single strokes, gets your hands moving, a really, really good workout. It sounds something a little bit like this. Chaos, or is it? Anyway, good fun. Um, the drummer in this case, a guy by the name of Andrew Rankin, who apparently is still gigging around London, if not with the Pogues. And uh, the groove, let's look at the, the, the main pattern first. Uh, the, the song's sort of divided into what I would call a stabby bit, which is what you hear in the intro when it, it comes back. I'll look at that in a little while. But first we'll look at the, the main groove of the song, which is a verse bit and a chorus bit. And the, essentially the same pattern is played throughout, but in the chorus there's a little bit of a variation adding the toms. Now, this is played as triplets. And so we're going to be counting one anna, two anna, three anna, four anna, one anna, two anna, three anna, four anna. And we're going to play single stroke triplets. And first of all, let's just look at single stroke triplets. You should know what that is, I guess. Uh, I've done videos about uh, the different subdivisions, but just in case you're counting one under, two under, three under, four under, and playing your hands right, left, right, left, right, left, or if you prefer starting with your left hand, left, right, left, right, left, it goes like this. Triplets. You can't hear me counting over that, so I didn't bother. Okay, now there's an accent pattern here, which is we're playing uh, if we're counting triplets, we're paying an accent on the number and the R uh of the one and the three. So we've got one and a, uh, two and a, uh, three and a, uh, four and a. Uh. That's the first bit. And then there's another accent on the two and the four. So altogether, it's like a sort of uh, inverted swing. One and a, uh, two and a, uh, three and a, uh, four and a. Uh. One and a, uh, two and a, uh, three and a, uh, four and a. Uh. And when you're playing that as triplets, because it's threes, um, the, uh, the handedness of each beat reverses. So if we're going right, left, right, left, right, left, we've got one and a uh, starts with the right hand and then the two and a uh, with the left hand. One and a, uh, two and a, uh, three and a, uh, four and a. Uh. So uh, that's something to consider. So we're going to be playing the accent on the one and a, uh, two and a, uh, three and a, uh, four and a. Uh. The two and four will be left handed. Now, the bass drum is going to be playing four to the floor throughout these sections of the song where we're playing this groove. And you're going to notice that the right foot and the left hand are going to coincide. So you need to watch out for your coordination on that point, right? So we've got one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. So let's listen to that with me playing on the snare. So that's a pattern you want to work on really nice and slowly until you can play that evenly. And as I say, the thing to look out for is that the two and the four land nicely with the bass drum because that's where you've got opposing hand and foot action. Um, now, um, we want to be able to do that nice and cleanly, but you know, you're, you may have come across technical exercises where we maintain, you know, you'll see me doing it as well, where we maintain like a really big uh, dynamic difference and also height difference in the sticks between the louder notes and the softer notes. So the, the kind of more formal or the more uh, sort of precise way of executing these, if you like, if you don't mind the term, uh, would be something like this.
but and it's not a bad idea to practice with those kind of uh, differences in height. It can help the uh, end result sound good. But when we're playing this particular song, the, the sort of softer strokes are still quite big, right? So our sort of bass line stroke is... kind of a 45 degree angle. And instead of using uh, stick height primarily to elicit the difference in dynamics, um, I'm using a little bit of a waviness of the hands. So again, I'll do this again, just to let you see. Uh, I don't want to get into a whole technical discussion about it because I'm, I'm having my reservations about how good that is to focus on some of the time, okay? So I'll play the groove a bunch of times, nice and slowly, just to let you see the way I'm using my hands and, and that might uh, give you some idea of how to produce the sound but uh, kind of if you want to learn how to do this I would play the pattern at a slow enough tempo for you to do this nice and comfortably but use your ears to guide you rather than thinking about the mechanics once you know how to play it you can look at the mechanics to sort of fine-tune and improve the quality of what you're doing but assuming this is a new idea to you uh, just think about what your ears can hear to start with okay so here we go That's clear enough. Now, in the main verses, that's all we've got. We've just got the snare, bass on one, two, three, and four. When we get into the choruses, we get the addition of the tom. Uh, I've watched some uh, live footage. You can look it up on YouTube, or if I remember to, I'll put a link. There's some live footage of the Pogues playing this in Japan, I think. And uh, drummer Mr. Rankin is going on to his tom. Uh, in the footage, he's going onto the uh, sort of rack tom, uh, but he's got big fat drums that are tuned a bit lower to, to, to my tuning, so I'm going to use the floor tom because it gives you a bit more of a meatier sound, but just be aware of that in case you're a bit finicky about these things. Um, in the choruses, we've got the tom at the beginning of every bar to start with, and then it kind of resolves to uh, the one and the three. So we've got tom at exactly the same pattern as I've demonstrated on the snare, but the tom on the one and the three. Uh, sorry, let me rewind that. We've got the same pattern as I demonstrated on the snare, but for some of the chorus, the tom is just on the one of each bar, and then it goes to the one and the three of the bar, and that gives you a nice sort of sense of the, the cycles and the, the resolution of the choruses. Um, in the first chorus, that would be three bars of tom on the one, and then one bar of the tom on the one and the three, then another three bars, just one on the tom, and then two bars, one and three. In the second and third choruses, um, the resolution is like, it's like two and a half bars of the tom on the, uh, the one and the three, but uh, I won't go into the details about that. To some extent, it's not a bad idea that you can work that out for yourself. Um, but you know, maybe I'll put together a little quickie chart anyway, just to make your life easier. And uh, so have a look in the, the, uh, the description box. And if you're lucky, I'll put a link to a PDF. Let's look at the chorus. First of all, we've got the floor tom on the one of each bar. And then I'll just demonstrate it as three bars of uh, floor tom on the one, and then one bar of the floor tom uh, on the one and the three. Here we go. Okay, so that's how the choruses go. As I said, um, you've got three bars of the one, one bar of the one and three, then three bars of the one, and then two or sometimes two and a half bars of the one and the three. Let's see what it looks like at speed. something like that, okay? So that's the essence of the groove for the song. Uh, 
practice it at a nice slow speed, count along with yourself and internalize that, meaning get yourself to the point that you can just turn it on and play it in a very relaxed fashion. Next, I'm going to look at the, the sort of what I'm calling the stabby bits, which is uh, the very beginning of the song and uh, it repeats after the choruses as well and at the ending of the, the song. And there's a few different lengths, but at the, the start of the song, we've got something that sounds like this. just like that. Now, I'm going to describe this in probably technically wrong terms, um, but it's just easier to digest this way. And all we've got is we've got a couple of bars of 4-4 four, four with the bass on uh, the 1 and 3 and the snare on the 2 and 4. So it's 1, boom, 2, 3, 4, okay? 4-4. Four, four. Now, the next bit, we've got a, a thing that's basically I would describe as 3-4. Now, it's really um, quarter note triplets if you're keeping like a consistency of the, the tempo and I can't even be bothered to go into that. So what I'm going to explain is that I'm counting this probably technically a wrong way, but I think it's a lot easier to, to get a grasp of. And again, our drummer here isn't doing anything terribly um, complex. It's, it's very simple and, and judging by the uh, little bit of uh, live footage I watched, uh, he keep, keeps it very simple, but there's a, a, a little variation I would do maybe if I was playing this live myself. Um, so first, so we, let's just count it. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, that's how I would count that. Um, and at the very beginning and the very end of the song, you have that one where it's uh, two bars of four, and then uh, in my context, uh, three bars of three, okay? One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or I should say, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. And then in the middle of the song, after the choruses, you've got um, a double the length, basically. So you've got four bars of the four count and then eight bars of the three count. So it'd be one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, two, three, six, two, three, seven, two, three, eight, two, three. We could count it two sets of four there. That's it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, now, my impression of what um, Andrew Rankin is doing is he's just playing bass and one hand, so he's going. That, um, again, if I was doing this, if I was playing in a local pub gig or something like that, I might just add a little ghost note where I sort of have uh, a, a swung feel added uh, to the, at least the, the quarter note uh, bit. So. One and a two and a three and a four and a... Because it would just add a little bit of texture to the thing. But that's all you need to be able to do. It's nice and simple. If you play it the slightly uh, more basicer, uh, the slightly basicer way, the more basic way, it's absolutely fine. Uh, bearing in mind that the, the Pogues was, uh, you know, had quite a, a big membership, it looks like. There's a lot of people on stage and uh, they created a massive chaotic sound, but they were incredibly tight at the same time. So uh, the drums didn't really need to add any extra texture. If you were playing this in your local pub or whatever with, I don't know, guitar, bass, drums and a singer or something, uh, that's where it'd be a little bit more appropriate and welcome, dare I say, to you know add that little bit of extra texture, for example, that swing that I just gave. But that more or less is that. That's everything you need to know to learn how to play this song. Uh, if you can go, the, the song's about two and a half minutes long, if you can go through that with the hands moving, it's a really nice single stroke workout. You could even put the song on loop and play four or five times and you'll really uh, feel the burn. 
Now, whether that's a good idea or not, I don't know. But let me know how that goes for you if you've managed to learn the song from the information I've given you today. Uh, as I say, take a look in the description and I'll link some kind of um, sheet music to help you go for this. Maybe I'll even put a little quickie chart of the arrangement of the song. Thank you very, very much, as always, for watching this video. I hope it's been informative, useful, entertaining, elucidating, and so on and so forth. Please don't forget that I'm a drummer, I'm based in the real world, and you can get in touch with me and book some lessons if there's anything about your drumming that you'd like some help with. Um, send me an email or something. Again, the, the contact details are below, and uh, I'd be very happy to discuss with you any issues that you're having or uh, whatever it is that's of interest to you and see if there's something I can offer to help you. Also, of course, it's really helpful if you like my videos to subscribe to the channel so you'll be kept up to date on future videos and it helps the whole YouTube thingy loving me uh, as I need it to do. Smash the bell, uh, thumbs up the thingy and all that good stuff, but most importantly, go off and practice.